There are two movies within the movie, A Loss of Innocence Story, A Wild Party and A Lion in Finally Dawn, Severio Costanzo's tale set in Rome in the 1950s, but most of all there is the shadow of Federico Fellini, who hovers over this exuberant drama like a benign, invited ghost, the story sounds derivative. A starstruck young woman becomes an extra in a film being shot at Cine Sita and is swept along with the movie's Hollywood stars on a night-long fate straight out of La Dolce Vita. But instead of creating a pale homage to Fellini's 1960 classic, the writer and director smartly walks the line between a tone that adores movies and a cynical view of narcissistic actors. Finally, Dawn is uneven. And at two hours and twenty minutes indulgently long, but it is also full of texture, wit and a few done-to-perfection set pieces. The film's first half is the best and displays the same feel for the precise details of a world that Costanzo brought to his direction in the series My Brilliant Friend. We are immediately thrust into an effectively suspenseful scene from a black-and-white war movie, with a woman and child in a closet hiding from the Gestapo, a scene shot to evoke neorealist films like Rossellini's Rome, Open City. It's no surprise that the scene turns out to be in a movie that a mother and her two grown daughters have been watching at a Sunday matinee, as finally dawn moves into color. Italian directors throw all this ugly stuff in your face, as if the war wasn't enough, the mother says as they walk out. But the daughters are dazzled by the stars, the real-life Alida Valley, Alba Rohrwacher, and fictional Sean Lockwood, Stranger Things' Joe Keery. The pretty, stylish older daughter is spotted by a crew member from Cine Sita and invited to audition as an extra the next day. But it is the timid younger daughter, Mimosa, Rebecca Antonassi, who tags along and is cast.